Surviving space. Artificial gravity will be critical to long-term space travel and settlement by Mark E. Armstrong. The next few years will see the first commercial space stations in low Earth orbit, followed by large rotating space stations. If projects currently in development come to fruition, conventional microgravity habitats are the goal of three proposals funded for development by NASA, which has set aside $415 million to support commercial space stations to take the place of the International Space Station upon its retirement. In the same way, NASA developed a market for commercial launch operations and stepped back to a customer role supporting launch services provided by commercial firms, NASA looks forward to being a customer for services on the first commercial space stations. A small part of this development includes rotating space stations that would bring to life the long-awaited vision of people living and working in space while able to walk about normally and avoid the effects of microgravity. Many designs for advanced space structures have taken the form of giant wheels in space, beginning in 1928 with the writings of Austro-Hungarian engineer Hermann Potocznik, published a more detailed vision of a space wheel that would provide artificial gravity, and in the 1950s, Werner von Braun's circular space station was popularized in Collier's magazine and on Walt Disney's television show. However, most of us were first exposed to the idea of a rotating space station by Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, released in 1968. While structures the size and scale of a huge rotating wheel providing artificial gravity through centrifugal force have not yet been developed, the concept is worth pursuing. Thanks to tremendous reductions in launch costs, the potential to build up resources for a multiple body system in low Earth orbit or around the moon is becoming more feasible. A number of different proposals have been suggested. NASA's Next Space Technologies for Exploration Partnerships, Next Step, has enabled Boeing to begin investigating artificial gravity systems, for example. Floating No More Astronaut Scott Kelly returned to Earth in 2016 after 340 days on the ISS along with Russian cosmonaut Mikhail Kornienko, serving as guinea pigs for researchers to gain a better understanding of the consequences of long-term microgravity exposure. His description of the weakness, pain, dizziness, and swelling he experienced after returning to Earth is vivid and cautionary. To minimize some of these effects, astronauts on the International Space Station spend up to two hours per day exercising to maintain bone density and muscle mass, time that could otherwise be spent pursuing research goals and maintenance. Other effects experienced during spaceflight include fluid shifting in the body, impaired immunity, disturbed eyesight, and in some cases, space sickness. All are impediments to productivity, not to mention overall health. While most of these issues resolve after returning to Earth, microgravity effects on the eyes can be permanent. As much as two liters of blood shift toward the upper body due to microgravity, resulting in at least 60% of astronauts who spend six months or more on the International Space Station experiencing loss of visual acuity or woolly spots in their field of vision. NASA had developed a certain confidence that they had advanced countermeasure suite up there, said astronaut Michael Barat. Ironically, it was during Barat's day on the ISS in 2009 that optic nerve and vision changes were first observed. This condition, dubbed visual impairment and intracranial pressure syndrome, or VIIP, has affected a high percentage of male astronauts, sometimes permanently. For unknown reasons, this phenomenon appears to only affect men. I would say, next to radiation, vision in space is one of the highest risk for human health. Specifically, spaceflight-induced intracranial hypertension with vision alterations, said Dorit B. Donoviel of the National Space Biomedical Research Institute. NASA has been investigating the cause of this eyeball distortion and Broad has conducted experiments to measure the buildup of pressure behind the eyeball in microgravity. A sleep sack designed to pull blood down to the legs and reduce pressure in the upper part of the body was tested by two crew members in 2017. By experimenting with mice on the ISS, Japanese researchers have shown that microgravity also introduces additional oxidative stress on cells 
changing metabolic patterns in a way that leads to changes in cell death, cell repair, and inflammation. One of their conclusions was that artificial gravity could mitigate these effects and minimize VIIP. Co-author of the study Michael Delp of the College of Human Sciences at Florida State University commented, The problem is the longer the astronauts are in space, the more likely they are to experience visual impairment. Some astronauts will recover from vision changes, but some don't. So this is a high priority for NASA and space agencies worldwide. Thanks to two decades of continuous occupation of the ISS, much has been learned about the short and long-term effects of microgravity. But solutions are elusive and need to be found prior to undertaking longer interplanetary missions, such as a multi-month trip to Mars. One solution suggested by the Mars Society, among others, may be to tether multiple modules traveling to Mars and inducing rotation to create a degree of gravity. If the connecting tethers are accompanied by a pressurized counterweight for the occupied module, this second structure could carry a cargo of water, fuel, and other mission supplies, and might provide shelter in the event of a solar radiation event. Radiation Dangers A solar flare striking a crewed mission beyond the Van Allen belt, such as the Lunar Gateway, may hit the crew with a dose of about 30 to 40 rentgens, or REMS. That is not especially dangerous, as earthbound workers exposed to nuclear radiation have received 74 REM with no observed ill effects. Scientists estimate that 100 REM results in a 1.8% increased chance of cancer over 30 years. Still, it is always possible a more powerful solar flare might threaten a mission. The prediction of solar events is in an inexact science. NASA has developed plans for space weather monitors on Earth to relay word to moonbound Artemis astronauts so they can put together a makeshift shelter with supplies on hand, cases of water, food, and so on. But on longer missions, such makeshift preparations are not ideal. NASA's plans for returning to the moon currently include the Lunar Gateway as a staging point for lunar landing operations and to serve as a continuing presence on the moon. Crews there will be exposed to the effects of long-term radiation exposure not encountered aboard the ISS, which is protected by Earth's magnetosphere. Blended Technologies Maintaining communication with Earth and solar power are additional issues that will need to be addressed for a rotating system to be successful. Communications can be maintained through the design of a separate communications unit, keeping station near the hub of the structure, and solar panels could be stationed there as well. Artificial gravity researchers with NASA and ESA are looking toward experiments that can help determine the appropriate amount of rotational artificial gravity. Lower gravity requirements would need less rotational speed and also simplify engineering for the spacecraft. Is lunar gravity enough? at about one-sixth of Earth's, or perhaps Martian gravity at about one-third? Ultimately, we must validate in space it's impossible to simulate on Earth, according to Giles Clement, NASA's lead researcher on artificial gravity. There is interest in the benefits of artificial gravity, but building the hardware is tricky. It's not easy to build Stanley Kubrick space station that spins. Astronauts fear artificial gravity, according to Bharat. Why? Because we don't like big moving parts, they break. Experimental systems need to include redundant components and active monitoring to warn the crew of wear and possible failure, and in the case of tethered systems, to alert the crew of cable fatigue and stretching. Systems may also be required to compensate for stretching and wear over time. They break. Experimental systems need to include redundant components and active monitoring to warn the crew of wear and possible failure and in the case of tethered systems, to alert the crew of cable fatigue and stretching. Systems may also be required to compensate for stretching and wear over time. For any rotational systems to be successful in long-duration spaceflight, they will need to be tested in a space environment. A scaled-down, uncrewed demonstrator could be flown to test the efficacy of the design, materials, and control systems required for success, deployed in Earth-low Earth orbit or near the Lunar Gateway. Advances gained through such testing would contribute to readiness for larger and more extensive systems in the future. Looking ahead, if human beings are to spend significant time in orbital facilities and transiting deep space, artificial gravity and more complex, robust space systems will be necessary. They are a critical component of space exploration, development, and settlement. What does 
it mean to go together beyond. Join us at ISDC 2025 and you will find out what we can do together as a human species and how far we can go when we are working on the same common goal. That is the dream of ISDC 2025 Together Beyond, the world's uniting together, realizing that we are all sharing this one beautiful planet, truly a starship on its own. Act like a crewmate, not a passenger at Astro.